All right, this is going to be the first table one that I work officially. So remember that this function is made up of an f of x on the outside, which would be something to the 11. And then the g of x is the guy on the inside, the one that you're plugging into f. So we're going to call that guy u. And then we're going to rewrite the original function. So whatever, I don't like the way my kid came up. So wherever you see x third minus six, you put a u. So now I have u to the 11. I mean, this is supposed to be like y equals whatever. If you want, I can put y equals. Now, I know that I'm going to need the derivative of u. So I'm going to take this dude's derivative right over here. The derivative of x3 minus 6 is 3x squared. Multiply by the power of subtract 1. Negative 6 is a constant. Derivative 0. So this is going to be everything I need. Now, I want to take the derivative of u to the 11. Understanding that u has x in it. It's a function of x. So I use what's called the general power rule. I still do the same damn thing I did before. I take the derivative, I multiply by the power, and I subtract one. However, I need the derivative of u. This is where the chain part comes in. This is the chain. I need the chain rule to give me du. And now the problem is over. <laughs> Just put these things back where they belong. You're going to put the x3 minus 6 back where it was. On the inside, remember, this is your g of x. This is the inside function. And then his derivative goes on the outside. Now, I can neaten this up a little bit. I only have an 11 and a 3. And this isn't going to take a tremendous amount of brain power for me to just take this dude and put him in the front. 3 times 11, and then x squared goes along for the right. I do expect you to do this part. This is just me neatening up my answer a little bit. My six came out a little funky. So again, inside, outside. So the inside dude becomes u. You take his derivative because you know you're going to need it. Replace the inside guy with the u. Take the derivative like you normally do. Don't forget the chain rule part. And then just plug everybody back in. And if you can simplify it a little, you simplify it. So this is the derivative of this, OK? This is the chain rule. There's the chain part. I took the derivative of him. Remember, I told you the mistake would be people do this. People just go, oh, multiply by 11, and then subtract 1, and then 3x squared. You know, this is what people do. People multiply by the 11, they subtract 1, and then they take the derivative of this and put it here. This is the mistake. This is not chain rule. That's a load of bullshit is what that is. OK, so, okay. so I put two examples at the same time. Even though they look similar, the four here is attached to the sine. So this one is sine to the fourth. So it's sine x four times. This one, the four is attached to the x. Now, you might see them better if I do this. This is sine x, 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 x. This one is really sine x to the fourth. So you'd have sine x, one, two, three, four times, right? So they're different. Even though they look similar to each other, they are not the same. Now, when I attack them with the chain rule, the person that I pick to be the u, the g, the inside, is different. Here, I have my g of x. My u is going to be sine x. Now, I know I need it, so I'm going to immediately take the derivative of u. Remember. D doesn't stand for dumbass. I mean, sometimes it does. DU for derivative of U. The derivative of sine is cosine. So now remember what I said. Go back to here and replace it with U. So now I have U to the fourth. The derivative of U to the fourth is 4 U to the third times DU. Problem is over. Just put everybody back in there. It's 4. What was U? Sine. To the third, what was du cosine x? And you know, I'm perfectly fine with you leaving the answer like this. If you get this, I'm thrilled to death. It shows me that you understood the chain rule. Derivative of the outside is four, right? Four in the front, power becomes three, right? Multiply by the power, subtract one. 
That's the derivative of the outside. This doesn't change. Then the chain rule tells you, oh, you need his derivative, by the way. Boom, there it is. Now this one, you have to be careful. Who is the U? Well, the U has to be the G, the inside function. Here, my outside function is sine, my f. My g would be x4. So u has to be x4. You have to be super careful on these. If you pick the wrong u, the whole, the whole thing is going to be shot. You have to be really careful. This is going to end up being sine u. So the u is x to the fourth. Now take his derivative, which is 4x3. Now replace x4 with u. This is the whole point. This is why it's called u substitution. Now the derivative of sine u is cosine u times du. You will always have the du as the chain. So now just put everybody back in there. It's cosine of u, which was x to the fourth, times the du, which is 4x third. Now, there is a temptation here. <laughs> To do shit you see x's and x's so near each other and your brain wants to do stuff with them it's like can i put them together no you can't so i'm going to avoid that temptation and move it into the front do you have to do this no you don't have to do this but i prefer to do this to avoid doing anything strange with these okay so even though they look similar they're not they're very very different here the u is sine x here, the u is x4. And I think it's a little more clear when I put the parentheses around the angle part. All right, fourth one, secant, or as I like to call him, sec. So again, who is the u? Well, it, it helps if you want to put parentheses there. The u is going to be that. The u is going to be 8x. I don't know the derivative of 8x. What the hell is the derivative of 8x? Multiply by the power which is one, you get eight, and the x drops off because when you subtract from one, you get x to the zero, <laughs> so it goes away. So remember, whenever you take the derivative of something with x, the x drops off, so that's that. So I'm gonna rewrite my u as secant of u sec u. Now, that sounds horrible. <laughs> when you take the derivative of secant, it's secant tangent. So the derivative of secant u is, secant u times tan u times times what there's more the derivative of u this is the chain rule you have to take the derivative of this dude that's the whole point of this problem so now you have to be really careful when you write this i have to put u here and here i can't put x there so my derivative is done it's over the derivative of secant is secant tangent Derivative of sec is sec tan. So put 8x back here and here. And then what goes there is the 8. And I don't like it there. <laughs> I'm going to put the 8 in the front. So there. It, it, it's there. The, the 8 goes there. But I'm just moving it in the front because it looks, it looks a little stupid all the way at the end there. So I'd rather, I would rather the constant be in the front. I'm not gonna have a heart attack if you leave eight here. I will be pissed off if you decide to write 64X here. <laughs> this is why you probably shouldn't put the eight there. You should move the eight in the front to avoid that. But really simple. The derivative of secant eight X is secant eight X tangent eight X times eight. And I just threw the eight in the front. All right, so the very last example, one more. This is an example of a double chain rule. So I have sine u. The derivative of sine u is going to be cosine u du. However, my u this time has a chain rule in it. I just did this example, and there's a reason that I did that example. So this is why it's a double, because you know, in order to do the derivative of sine secant 8x, I have to use the chain rule. But to take the derivative of his inside part, I have to use the chain rule again. That doesn't mean that you need to do u substitution twice. We're going to be a little more sophisticated here now. I have secant of some stuff. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent 
again, I just worked this example. This thing stays there and there. And then you just take the derivative of 8x and put it in the front. All right. And again, I just did that one. And that, that's why I did that one. So I could just do this quick. So now, again, you put the u where secant 8x is. There it is. u secant 8x. And now take the derivative. The derivative of sine u is cosine u times du chain rule and now plug everybody in so it's going to be cosine now be careful you don't write cos x and then put parentheses this is nonsense it's cosine of what of of u which is secant 8x now don't get any cute ideas and think to yourself oh secant is one over cosine i'm going to put one over cosine there and cross out the cosines this is not a product <laughs> this is a function this is your angle. So you can't just do any weird crossing out. So it's cosine u times du, which is all that shit. I think I'm just going to take that 8 and put it all the way in the front here. So I'm going to put secant tangent over here. If it's not obvious to you, these answers get absolutely monstrously long. <laughs> Look at this fucking answer. I mean, this, this is long. Cosine u du. And I just took the eight from the DU and just moved it in the front. You could you could go put the eight there if you want, but this is this is it. This is your answer. This is one long answer. Also, a lot of fun to type into web work, right? So sine u is cosine u DU. But when I did the derivative of u, I had to use the chain rule again. I just did it a little bit faster. 